today we will be exploring the blending of curves and lines. You will have looked at tangents before and I guess by now we should understand that a tangent is defined as a line that touches or blends into the circumference of a curve at a point. But there are other instances where curves and lines will have to meet or blend and also there are instances where curves and other curves will have to meet or blend. So the examples that we'll work through today will be looking at some of those other instances and demonstrating to you how those constructions can be done and applied to produce drawings as we continue to work. As per usual, we will try to isolate the drawings because as you look here, you will see that there are a number of drawings on this page, but we will try to isolate the drawings as best we can uh, to allow you the opportunity to focus on one particular example um, and then we will just move to the others as we continue. We will, as usual, try to take out some of the lines and some of the colors from the drawing and that will give us the opportunity then to explain what is happening and then bring those lines back in to represent what would have been explained. So, we are at example number one. And example number one right now shows you a 90 degree angle, vertical and horizontal line. And you're told that you want to represent a curve that's going to touch the vertical line and also touch and blend into the horizontal line. And we'll use some numbers today. So we'll say that that curve is supposed to be radius 20 millimeters. And that 20 millimeters then is the, the guide for you with regards producing this curve. The first thing that you will do then is that you will get lines parallel to the vertical and horizontal. The parallel distance being the radius of the curve. So in this instance, that is 20 millimeters. Now you already know how to get a line parallel because you would have also gone through that in a previous video. But just to refresh your memory, you would open your compass to that parallel distance, 20 millimeters, go on the line, scribe arcs above, go on the vertical, scribe arcs across, and then you would connect the top of those arcs with lines. So. I'm dropping in those lines for you now. So those lines are in and those lines intersect. It is that point of intersection that you will place your compass point at. Compass open to the radius that is required, which in this instance is 20 millimeters. And you should be able then to pull that curve blending in here with no major problem. So if I just drop in that curve for you to show you the final product, then this curve, and you recognize that the red lines today are your outlines so they stand out a little bit more and you can see the construction completed for blending in that arc as well this is a relatively simple construction so we move on to the second construction the second construction for us though is exactly the same construction as the first one just that i'm using a slightly different method to explain that to you only using the compass to get this done no ruler in this instance so to do this construction, again, let me just eliminate a couple lines. Um, but to do this construction, you will be using your compass now open to that 20 millimeter radius, the radius of the curve that is required. And all you will do is proceed like you were bisecting that 90 degree angle. Yes, we covered bisecting angles as well. So you know that you would start by scribing this first arc. And then where this arc cuts the two lines, you will scribe two more arcs to intersect. It is this intersection that becomes the center point for your compass that will allow you to open the 20 and pull the curve in position like this. So again, no major problem. We are able to complete that construction relatively easily. So we move smoothly along on to construction number three. And construction number three now shows you an acute angle. Now, even though I showed you the compass method for the second construction, it must be stressed to you 
that there are instances where you can't use the compass in order to produce that curve. And that is if you have an acute angle or an obtuse angle, which we will look at next. So for this construction, you will most definitely be required to use the parallel line method in order to find the center point for the curve. So for this construction, let's say that the radius of the arc that we require is 25 millimeters. You will open compass to 25 millimeters, go on each line, describe the curves, and then you will draw in the parallel line like I have shown you now. And that parallel, those parallel lines, sorry, will give you the center point for the curve that you need to draw. Now, once you have that center point then, you should have no major problem showing the curve because the curve will be radius 25 millimeters, the same as the parallel distance that you would have represented. Again, a relatively simple task, no major problem. So we move on to construction number four. Construction number four is the exact same construction as construction number three. It is just that the angle is bigger. So because it is now an obtuse angle, the construction proceeds in the same way, where, again, you will get the parallel lines. The parallel lines will intersect. And at that point of intersection, with the compass open to the radius that is required, you'll be able to blend that curve in as well. So if you can do number three, you can definitely do number four, just that the angles are different. The next construction for us then is construction number five. Uh, this is where the work starts to change up a little bit, but the, we are building on what we would have done before. So it is just a matter of adding on a little bit every single time. So I'll take off the lines for clarity, and then we will pull those lines back in as we continue working through this example. So what we have here right now is an outline, which is the red line, and a point, the X that you're seeing on the page. And you want to produce a curve. You would be given the radius for that curve that will pass through this point and also blend into the outline at the bottom. Uh, and let's say in this instance that the radius of this curve were 30 millimeters. Just like you did on the other constructions, you are starting to look at producing a parallel line. So we know what is required. These arcs are 30 millimeters away. And then we know that the parallel line will just fall into position. We know from this then that anything that we do up here, from there to the outline at the bottom, that distance will always be the 30 millimeters. So what we need to do next then is find a point that will also be 30 millimeters away from the X. So to do that, you will open your compass to 30 millimeters, go to the X and scribe this curve. So the intersection now between this curve and the parallel line would be the center point for a curve radius 30 that will pass through the center of the X and then barely touch the line at the bottom. So if I drop in that curve for you now, you will see that application working perfectly because the curve now fits exactly as it is supposed to on the construction. We can now move on to example number six. Number six adds a little bit more. So we're building all the time. Uh, you're seeing a circle in position now. So what will happen with construction number six? Just to explain to you the what is required with regards to construction. Uh, construction number six represents a circle. And that circle is radius 15 millimeters. This construction also represents an outline. And what you are asked to do is that you are asked to draw a curve that is going to blend into the circumference of this circle and also blend into the line at the bottom. So the steps basically stay the same. You want to produce a parallel line. 
and you want that parallel distance to be the radius of the curve that you are asked to produce. Let's say in this instance that that radius that you want is 25 millimeters. You will proceed then in much the same manner as you would have been doing previously by getting that parallel line. I've left off the curves in this instance because I'm sure you know what to do with regards to those curves. So you get that parallel line in. You know that anything from here down will be equal to radius 25 millimeters in this instance. And then you want to take now the radius of this circle and add it to the radius of the arc that you're required to produce. So this circle is radius 15. The, the radius of the arc that you want is 25. So you open compass now to 40 millimeters. Place it at the center of the circle and scribe an arc to cut that parallel line. Like this. So this arc here now will be 25 millimeters away from a point somewhere on the circumference of this circle. And it will also be 25 millimeters away from the line. So once your compass is open to 25 now, you should quite easily be able to scribe this curve that will blend into the circle and also blend into the line at the bottom. We move on then to example number seven. And example number seven is exactly the same construction as example number six. The difference here is that you want the curve to fall on the outside as opposed to on the inside like it fell just now. But then you will have to do some subtracting as opposed to some adding to get this curve to work. So you're told that the curve that you require now is radius 50. So this parallel line up here is 50 millimeters away from the baseline. You have the circle, which is again radius 15. So you subtract 15 from 50. Once you have subtracted 15 from 50, you know then that you will open your compass to that 35 radius and you will scribe this arc. And that intersection now will be the center point. Once you open your compass to 50 again, you should be able to pull this curve on the outside that will blend into the line and will also blend into the circumference of the circle. Again, relatively simple. So let's move to our final construction. Um, this construction just basically combines everything that you would have done up to this point in time. You are required to produce two curves, this curve that I'm highlighting here, as well as this one that I'm highlighting at the bottom. And the method for producing these curves will require you to locate the center point and pull those curves, but you will have to do some addition and some subtracting. So we've built on everything that we did before, and we are now gonna look at completing this final example. As per usual, we pull out some of these lines to make life a little easier for all of us. So what we have here now is this big circle with a radius of 40 millimeters and this smaller circle with a radius of 25 millimeters. The radius of the curve that you're required to form here is 60 millimeters. So those three numbers are important to you for this part of the construction. We are adding in this instance. So you have radius 40. You know I said radius and not diameter. And you will add that radius 40 to radius 60. That gives you 100. Compass open to 100. You go to the center point of the circle and you scribe this arc out here. On the smaller circle now, which is 25, you will add 25 to 60, which will give you 85. And you will then scribe this arc at 85 millimeters from the center of that smaller circle. You would have now located the center point for your arc. If your compass is then open to 60 millimeters, you will be able to draw this curve that's going to blend evenly into the two circles that you were given initially. I'll take that arc out now 
so that we can focus on the other bit of the construction. You are now required to put in an arc at the bottom. To get this arc in, you have to subtract. So the radius of the curve that you require in this instance is 120 millimeters, a little bigger than you had for the previous one. And since this curve is radius 40, we will subtract that 40 from 120 and we are able to scribe an arc out here. And that arc will be at radius 80. You will then go to the smaller circle and subtract that radius from 120. That should leave you at 95. And from the center, you will scribe a second arc to intersect. The intersection of these arcs is the center point for the curve that you're required to draw. Once your compass is then open to 120 millimeters, you should now be able to have this curve in position, barely touching the circumference of the two circles that were represented earlier. I'll drop in the first arc as well so that you can see what would look kind of a, a completed drawing. This just shows you how the arcs will work. I've taken the arcs around a little bit so that you can see them pushing off of the circles as well. But if it was a drawing that you're required to produce, a final drawing, then you know that the blending would have to stop at the appropriate place. I just want to stress for you one thing, uh, just to relate this back to the tangents that we did before. You remember that we would have had a normal for our tangents. For these constructions, a normal can be represented as well. So I'm just gonna show you quickly what your normal would look like for the bottom curve. You start at this center point, passing through the center of the circle, and this line would be the point of contact, highlighting the point of contact between the two curves. So that would be the normal, one of the normals for the big curve. The other normal then would fall on the other side. I'll also show you the normal for the first curve on the smaller circle here. And this line coming to the center would be highlighting that point of contact here. Uh, so that would be representing the normal for the tangent as well. So it is a curve, but it is a tangent. Therefore, you will represent a normal as well where those constructions are concerned. Um, please note that if you are asked a question on a multiple choice paper related to curve blending, you should be well positioned to answer. If you are asked to draw, whether manually or in CAD, you should be able to use the appropriate application to get the questions done. And this covers for you curve blending, which is hugely combined with tangency. And you should be able now to produce shapes that require you to get lines to come into contact with, with curves or get curves to come into contact with curves. As usual, it's been my pleasure presenting this information to you. I hope that this information has been helpful and I look forward to presenting to you the next bit in our subsequent exercise.